Hello, and welcome to Disco Elysium. Bot always posts at the same time every hour. Huh, weird. Um, you guys, give me a second, I forgot. We have two new commands today, two new SFX commands. Inspired by Disco Elysium. And I forgot that I have to turn them on. So we're doing them. Not Kim, not Harry. Keep going, you're close. You know in your heart of hearts what it is. No, <laughs> you piece of shit, Swink. You know what it is, although, there you go. There's one of them. <laughs> so there's that and Kuna just says shit. Kuna just says shit. He can't be stopped. He just says shit. But Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> these really make me chuckle. All right, we're going in. We got to figure out this body, guys. We got to figure out who done it and why they done it. That's what we're here for. Hello, Arizat's calf, Swank, Cable Flame. Hope you're all well. But before we figure out what's going on with this body, we got to come in here to this bookstore. Revachol is pronounced Revachol. Or in Oranje. Cla fuck. We'll never know how to say classage. So this is a bookstore that Annette works at. Get books and molten candy. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the Kuno word Kiyomda somewhere. Yeah, fire fruit was good. It's real good. All right, so these are also racist books. I should not profess that I like these books or it will get me in trouble. Storekeep, tell me about these muscleman books. Oh, Man from Hjelmdal. A very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they so popular? Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. So which one should what I start with? Matter? They're all the same. However, the customer is always right, they say. You're goddamn right, Placence. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Hjelm Dalaman, the man from Hjelmdal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. <laughs> what a dumb name. Uh, oh, I don't have the money for it. Oh, fuck, I gotta get money. Rows and rows of Hjelm Dalaman blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hjelmdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hjelmdal. Return to Hjelmdal. <laughs> These sound and real stupid. Solipsistic. Man from Hjelmdal and the Hjelmdal Man. Five hours? I thought I had until noon the next day. Maybe a hundred. Man from Hjelmdal and the Sages at the End of the World. Man from Hjelmdal ah, and the Force God. I didn't realize I was Man so strapped for time. And the scorched earth. Man from Hyomdal. Also, I'm up. The Hyomdal colonies. Man from Hyomdal and the swamp beast. Oh my god, we gotta Man ask for Hyomdal more. But the snow crabs. Swank, I'm already homeless. I'm hobo cop. Not even close. Man from Hyomdal in hell. Man from Hyomdal and the forest of slaves. Man from Hyomdal under the lake. Man from Hyomdal. Hiel Fuck, Dahl I can't burning. be homeless. Maybe I could this even rob the this store. Death, a pastoral combat game book set in the world of Yom Dalaman. And so All much All right, more. we got to see if any of these speak to me. A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. What is it? Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Yom Dal yeah. in chains. Yes, I think it's just the because there's so fucking many cable phones. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. We're we're tired of these, and this is what we, it takes. She's laughing at him, belittling him. Is it? Friday the 13th, all Between right. Between the throne and the Hyamdala man lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hyamdala 
and the devil woman. Oh yeah, let's be a misogynist too. Aren't all women devil women? Especially those leering types who seem to wear nothing but an armored bikini. There's also some sort of a snake lizard beast slithering around her abdomen, abdomen chest, chest shoulder, shoulder region. region. <laughs> okay. It's symbolic of vice and yeah, sin. Yeah, no, I, I got it. Conceptualization. The before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyeongdong novels. All right, well, we don't actually have the money, so that was all for nothing. We must study this wondrous tomb. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. Storekeep, what board games do you Wonderful have here? Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda. A very educational game for those interested in geography. Sounds Wild awful. Brita is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can, you can play, play with, with your children. children. Who are you going to play board games with? Do you have friends or family? Do I have friends? Look at the are lieutenant. Are actually friends or just colleagues thrown together by circumstance? Yes. Kids, friends, chicks. I have all of those. No, I don't. No, 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 no. Plenty of people. Look, who doesn't love this face right here? This is a face that just mm, sows seeds wherever he goes. Then you're a lucky man, officer. Children are the greatest of treasures. Then why do you keep yours For outside? With friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. Oh my god, It'll that sounds great. <laughs> I don't have any money, Fancy lady. Auras there. No, role playing games are popular among those types. You know, who are into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts, that they have rituals where they try to summon This is so vague, Placence. Highly you don't know what you're talking stuff. about. You can still buy them, though. An endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices litter the table. That's a good word. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. So this must be D&D, &D, presumably. There's also a hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters yeah. of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrog. Books in a board game section? <laughs> who wants to read books? There's a box that says... You know who they got to voice the narrator? Edition, I do not. Settings, yeah, he's great module. though. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure a fantastic. board game. New maps and miniatures. Honestly, all of the voice a acting in this game is, is pretty spot on. Real. That price is steep. But then it's the third edition mega, mega setting, setting supplement. supplement. So it makes sense. Jesus Christ, where do people get money? Like, my job wouldn't give me money. All right, listen, Placence, I need money. You are- Welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. My name is Placence. Well, I need to get a lot of money be welcome. in and five please, hours. Take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. A golden pendant hangs around the woman's neck in the shape of what looks like a tiny fish head trapped in amber. This can be well enough. Can you give me some money? I feel there won't be an opportune moment to ask later. Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you fuck. money. Fuck! I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. What the fuck does one that mean? One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. I am content Certainly with that. There are good things to be said about dependence. Good practice for fighting our common enemy. You misunderstand me. I'm a powerful feudal lord. I demand tribute. This is about traditions. That's pretty good. What kind of... Yeah, she's a hustle fuck. She pretty much just said, pull yourself up by the bootstraps, which is... All right. Yeah. Okay. Damn, you're right. What kind of business relationship would that kickstart? Actually, that's a, that's a good point. Excuse me, I don't even know why I said that. A lapse of professionalism that does not represent my values. No, I'm not going to apologize. Sorry cop is not sorry cop. Sorry cop is feudal lord at the moment. Now, hey there. Sounds like someone isn't taking responsibility for the energy they bring into this space. I hate this one. Tribute? Power? These are not the traditions we're used to in this part of the world. 
a curious pendant you're wearing. Oh yes, helps to have an anchor in these times. All right. I am the proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her, vo her voice, high-pitched, sounds familiar. You've talked to her before through the doorbell. She has fine-tuned her voice to find the most welcoming approach for attracting new customers. It doesn't work. Your daughter is the one standing outside the store, right? Number two would get her in trouble. Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes, of Great. course. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking <sighs> with her? Her opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. She's certainly polite and very helpful. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. <laughs> I can't, children, I can't be mean to children. Turn out as great as my Even head. sorry cop isn't that sorry. The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. That honestly, I think is what I want to say. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. <laughs> Maybe coming on a touch too strong there. <laughs> All this pressure is made really anxious you know she's been chewing her nails uh but see if i am plaisance the bitch store owner i'm gonna be like oh no this must this will not do to have our you know customers see a child biting her nails i'm going uh <laughs> okay we're going three actually you must be kidding there's nothing like that happening how much do you pay the kid good sir what does a young child do with money anyway okay no i save it for her as a fund She's securing her financial future out there. Show me the banknotes. Such criminal behavior would not happen in more developed countries. In some more developed countries, this sort of thing is two felonies, child labor and slavery. Those countries will realize they've raised a lazy and spoiled generation. Are we done with the jokes now? Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, well, I'm coming back. The way you're handling Why her strikes me as wrong. Sir? In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or what anyone's business. our society? Am I not from around Denial here? Denial is the way she copes with criticism. All this pressure has made her really anxious. You know, she's God, been biting I her nails. Not to do that. It's disgusting. And I told you to mind your own business. Clearly, you have no idea how hard it is to raise a girl in this economy. Listen, Placence, I am a millennial, and I feel like I need to tell you all about this your business. This economy is a mysterious force like cosmic weather mysterious and harsh i don't think she can do anything about it she can if i she bite my fingers all the time power. this is what's called growing pains life isn't easy life doesn't give break you've probably seen me biting my fingers on this very stream come on ma'am it's obvious she can't do anything about it there you go you kim placing an unnecessary burden on a young child fucking get him what you're doing is wrong, even I know that, and I usually don't know anything. That is true, but obviously the will of the market may make an exception for your daughter. <laughs> yeah, it's super alright for kids to chew their hands off. Forget I said anything. <laughs> um, I usually don't know anything, and I know that. She stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. This is a person coming to terms with a new reality, one where they are wrong. Yes, we are easy. losing time. Oh, and actually, did I start? Okay, good, I did. She's looking for one, but there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. That's a really good look. Oh, no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. Oh, look at that. We changed this woman's mind. There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. Hmm. It sounds like both the husband and the mother treat her the way she treats Annette. Well, hold on now, Swank. Hold on now, Swank. Swank, Swank hold on. Hold on now. Uh, we've got rigorous self-critique. Shitting on Harry seems to be a positive thing that Harry has done. Harry the boy. I'm really excited to find out what this guy's last name is. Um, I'm glad I nailed Harry. It sounds like both the husband and the mother treat her the way she treats. It sounds like both the husband and the mother treat her 
the way she treats Annette. You're like Annette to your husband and your mother. Jesus Christ. Oh, well, my mother was horrible, of course. Absolutely perverse energies around that person. But my husband... Can you just imagine someone walking through your front door, your business's front door, and then just giving you... My a... husband is completely different, of course. Therapy. Is this husband Annette's father? Um... Yes. My husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here. No matter. Soon we'll both be off for Grand Couron. You know, this right here, I would have assumed that Placence would find offense to is the husband and its father. Wait, Grand Couron, where's that? It's a proper place to live. Oh. One of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead for sure. And your husband's also he involved with the bookstore? Investment. Since then, he's been what you might call a silent partner. Ah, super silent. Almost inaudibly so. Yeah, she does. She's she's cruising for that McMillions. Um, is Annette an only child? Yes, I'm afraid so. A real treat she is. It would be nice if she had... No, we couldn't have afforded more children, really. Not in this economy. Of course, yes, this economy. Exactly. Oh, well, yes. okay, I thought you were going to give me more than that. we quite busy people, you know, my husband and I. Quite busy. Children are a lot of work. You don't look like a father, so I don't expect you to understand. I'm sorry. I'm sure you do understand. She told me she didn't go to school anymore? She's been anymore? too busy helping me here. So she studied at home this trimester. This is a temporary solution, of course. I assure you, I of all people understand the importance of education. She will be back in school the moment the store takes off. And hell freezes over? Never mind. It's not a good topic to get into. All right, I had something else in mind. The woman looks aloof. I'm probably a father, her I just haven't kept in <laughs> Occasionally, she glances at her daughter's silhouette. Oh, Lord. Um, what if I want to buy a book? You I don't have money. Good browsing the shelves. Why do you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go, go. All right, I'll take a she look. She smiles and nods, seemingly. Or well for now, book peddler. I'm gonna talk to Annette and tell her that I have abolished the free market and ended child labor. I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. You just can't win. Out of the rain and into the gutter. What are you doing Math. now? Math. It's really difficult. Like, really. They say you need it to get rich. Better than standing outside in the cold, I guess. Annette, you are so ungrateful. Do you see oh, oh, I found all the hard work I did? Away. Oh? I thought this would fit you. Like, thanks for helping out. Not me. Oh, yeah. The city, I mean. Like a detective does. Fuck yeah. She gives you a hat almost exactly like the one Dick Mullen wears on the covers. Fuck yeah. Now I can tip it at ladies and say, my lady. Where'd you Just get it? Just what Dick Mullen would ask. I got it from behind the curtains. You're not really supposed to go there. Oh, okay. I can look just like Dick Mullen, except I'm an actual police yes, officer. I bet it looks good on you. Really serious. Really right. serious. I have to get back to my homework now before mum notices. Man, this is hard. I know math and things. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. What does this do for me? Encyclopedia? It makes me smarter. It belongs in a museum. Aw, shit. And this is like an actual fedora, not what people say are fedoras. Mr. Jones, sit down. <laughs> you see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Um, what's oh, behind the curtains? Now please go back to browsing the books. I'm Don't a police officer. The, the books are all you care about. Not only am I a police officer, I am an astute observer, and I have a fedora on, and Just I will not be told no. She's trying to put a spell on you. Urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. 
you see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Jesus, fuck. This is where she keeps the occult. This is the cursed part. Yeah, they're, they're laterally challenged fedoras. All right, guys, you know how I feel about doors that I can't get into. There's the one in the back of the, the cafeteria, in the kitchen, I guess. And now there's this. I have this to know. This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. Hey, Klingel, the, the brim size the matters. Ask any Eli lady. Fenton, the Seminide Islands down south. Aside from poking at it, Suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains We're gonna open remain it. shut. We're gonna open you. it. We have to know. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand is closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously I playing with I talisman. Honestly speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. Hey, Sviatsolov. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. See? See? Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. Places. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. Uh, uh, I must investigate beyond the you threshold. Do? My God, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. I can't. Step away, dear sir. I don't care. You cannot stop me. I am the law and I shall see what is behind the no. curtains. Please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. And she really doesn't want me to open this. Talking these. is always good. Go see what she has to say. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. Guys, the curtains, the curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as okay. if taunting you. All right, we'll go. We'll go fucking talk to the lady. Good lord, we've wasted so much time here. We're gonna be homeless. Hello again, esteemed. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? Crime romance and biographies of famous people why are you so uptight about those curtains i just want to know what's on I the other side i told you it's just a storage room for employees i don't understand why it's so important to you just let it go officer go buy some goddamn books you're supposed to be drawn to the book uh signature skill is drama but we're better at other things but drama's what we went for. It was either drama or empathy. She recites it like it's a poem, or like she's playing a role she's grown tired of. Why are you, <laughs> are you trying to put a spell on me? If it's just a storage room, then why does it have a Simonese ward protecting it? It's just for decoration. That is definitely not the case. You are lying. She wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight lip smile, then okay, something breaks. fine. It's just because this place is cursed, just like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling Take something to her pendant. You've broken her resistance. Pushing her further will gain nothing. Hmm. Oh, nice. Cool, Klingel. Uh, yeah, this is my very first time going through it. Uh, so we need to be delicate. How does this curse manifest curse itself? It's so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at Jesus. the very foundation. A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around the dimly lit it's store. A curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy <laughs> okay maybe i shouldn't peer behind the curtain because i need to make 90 quid or whatever the fuck real in like four hours didn't, didn't that curtain just move annette mentioned that previous tenants have experienced some financial it's troubles just that officer we're dealing with something supernatural here 
It's the caca demons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence. As if I was unwanted here. Oh, sounds familiar. Strange, I feel unwanted too, but what does it mean? Truly so? Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off you. You shouldn't stay in the store too long. It may be dangerous. <laughs> Would you like me to take that? <laughs> well, we're gonna... <laughs> We're gonna investigate the curse? What, what does that mean? How would, what would that investigation fucking look like? Do we think, is this the kind of world that would have curses? It seems mostly based in reality, right? A, a very racially tense one where everyone's angry at everyone. Only cool supernatural cops investigate curses. Well, I'm not a cool supernatural cop. I'm just a hobo cop. I I don't know. I'm I'm stuck. I'm trying to think. Do I want to investigate this and see what a supernatural investigation would look like? Paranormal investigation? Or do I just want to go in there? If I go in there and there's actually a curse, then I'm fucked because I'm so broke already. I guess I'll That's investigate. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. Bah, my liege, you know what this case calls for? A para detective. Yes. We will convince her to let us investigate the doomed commercial area. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. <laughs> Ma'am, I came here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. Are you sure? I don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I sensed the psychic emanations from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. I'm not sure I can trust your claims. Honestly, you look like a bit of a drinker. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but... Wow. The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his <laughs> notebook. Kim is the MVP. Go ahead then. Rock her world, he thinks. I'll compose some notes. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Cleo. <laughs> I do. I really do enjoy... Like, in some certain scenarios in this game, I want to play it straight, right? But other times, I really get joy from being the, the Ryan Gosling character from The Nice Guys. Or the... Um, Robert Downey Jr. from Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Admit I've had my share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm is parapsychologically taxing. To drink the spirits in order to contact the void. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. How do you know all this? Lady, I am a Here we go. paranautical, subnautical. I I just I'm a I'm the ace detective. Your wards brought me here in the first place. The Simony's blood also runs through me. I am the Void Revenant. I have the powers to debad all the bad I energies. I realize a pattern lies within the fabric. The hand of fate guides us. Our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. Exactly, please. Perhaps you truly are the one to deliver this woman from the doom. Yes. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. Do I involve Kim in this? Let's see, let's see. He's probably no nonsense, right? He probably doesn't believe in curses, so he'll back me up. Oh, uh... The lieutenant mumbles in minor confusion. He has not been listening closely enough. You put him on the spot. Certainly so, ma'am. I can assure you my partner is eminent in this part there we of the field. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honor. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. <sighs> Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sir. Of course, the entity. For I have sensed its presence. You have? The entity takes the form <laughs> of a woman. A witch, probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? It would be very nice, Cable Flame, if we got paid for this. I somehow don't think that will be. 
Chimney, the passage between heaven and hell, yes, of course. That chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. It's truly a mystery. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Fuck, Take I'm it. not gonna make my hundred ray all at all. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover. Yeah, in it's there. it's real good. You save your game, yo. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What you discover? Probably just some office space. Don't be scared. That's true. <laughs> Who needs room and board? Okay, but please, only a few questions. You wouldn't want to disturb the spirits. Um, actually, never mind. I don't have any questions. Aloof. Her features much softer. All right. Occasionally, she glances we will at her silhouette. Um, I don't. I don't think I know what this is. Oh, oh, okay. I see. I see. This is telling me where the white checks are. Interesting. All right. Um, so we shall save. You are correct. That's a good idea. Uh, before we go and figure out what's back there, let's explore up here too. These shelves are overburdened with. Oh, uh, never mind. I don't. I don't really care about that. I've looked at all the books. Tomb of Fascist Magic. Rather candid, quaint picture book brochure. Very colorful. Hey, thanks for the cheer. First cheer. First cheer. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta oh. of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershaw East. West of the river? Houdon. It's somewhere to live. Oh my goodness. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. <laughs> then Fallberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. Night City does not sound... Or what did, what did Kuno say? Fucking Rage City is not as far out of left field as it could be if Coal City is actually a it's place. It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is, north of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbor. Denver it has commerce. Right despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Hmm. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world. You're still alive. Okay, we're we're done. Yeah, people shouldn't live there, but they do. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies Whee! of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranormal literature. I'm not going to spend money on a map. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. But I will it's ask it there for sale. For you, actually. Unity, huh? balance. I looked at one. These three things or I are thought I did I to the working clicked on mind. Revishal. The point of the book and many others on this shelf is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Mm. Various paranormal. All right. Another boring book just discarded here. Several maps have the maps look old and it's not really a map. It's, it's a, a tourist, tourist thing, thing, Action Hawk. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. 
A date in the upper right corner says 48. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty Yeah, when I get money, head. I will you come and purchase things. You see the of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. Well, that's the only one I care about. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. Listen, how are you going to pay me for being a paranormal detective? They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Why is the one for that Martinez thing, so cheap? It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. Mm -hmm. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? They didn't get that far, for some reason. <sighs> a shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All right, it fine. We'll buy it. We'll business. buy it. It's cheap enough. I don't think almost one real is going to really. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Lose. All right, so interact. The map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year forty-eight resides on the upper right corner. Let's trace past Your through. finger moves through the various streets across Rue de Saint Ghislain and Rue Saint Sipa over San Brun. <laughs> I know, I'm Martinez broke. North. What am I gonna do? I'm fucked. The origins of place names in this game last night. Revachol was the nickname of a French anarchist who was guillotined in 1892 for being complicit in bombings of a famous parrot. Huh. All right. That's Finally interesting. Come into a halt. On the spot where you are currently standing although the map gives no such indication itself Rude map oh the worn map all right so hmm. well we're broke everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic all right let's explore behind here you see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room a strange cage like uh, i'm focused on money because it seems like <laughs> we're going to get soft like i like first off i think brandoid said we're going to get soft locked if we don't get it or maybe he said soft lock wasn't the term he used it seemed to me like we were fucked if we didn't have the money or first point ah end of second day i thought he said that Second point, second point, is that Gart, Gart doesn't deserve all the shit I put him through, man. I gotta give that man some money. But first we you have to explore the paranormal. You see lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese wards. Your shadow looming over it like See, I thought Brandoid said it was noon on the second day. Oh. A small, terrified, escapes from place and so she tries her best to look away her round face buried in her hands god kim we just don't deserve kim he's too good ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers Ooh, a vaguely androgynous portrait of a man a heavy door with a missing handle stands before you covered in dozens if not hundreds of Semini's trinkets and charms. You break the door instead of using the key she gave you, there wouldn't be a way. There would be a very funny dialogue with her waiter. <laughs> well, we just did it this way first. Oh, we could. Oh, I see. I see. It would have. We, there, we would never have succeeded. Uh, Sviatoslav. Guards? Okay. He's all right. All right. We have to knock on the door first. This is the first rule of paranormal investigation is that you always lead with a Holy knock. Echo. No one is there. Now we can use the key. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Yeah, gotta wake the spirits up. It, because like, listen, we're professional paranormal investigators. If we just go in there and the spirits are asleep or they're not expecting us, it's not a fair fight. All right. Uh, Kim, you go in first. You're the one in charge. You got damn right, Kim. Don't you forget it. 
Now that we've put Kim in his place, we're the lead detective here. Uh, has this been here for a while? <laughs> what is this place? The lieutenant stares at dusty training equipment. <laughs> it's an adventure! No, it's a gym. <laughs> Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. An airy feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one is... We know what the reason is. Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Sounds Nothing good. mysterious here. Okay, so... Flashlight? Oh. Nice. Oh. We got whole other aspects of gameplay we don't even fucking know about. Sand is dripping from a punching bag. Poster says, Sitius Fortis. The rest is worn off. We've got a shot put ball. Uh huh. Alright. Come on, lift it. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. No, we there would die. No collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? So, out of question, out of, out of curiosity, we've got um, rigorous self critique, right? So, when we fail a check, we get a health back. If I were to fail this check, would I get a health back? Before I take the damage? Oh, is it a red check? Red, yeah, it's okay. That that word's important. That word's important. Alright. Man, okay, so this is... I mean, this isn't as good as I thought it was, but it, it'll still be... Even when you fuck up a red check, you get something. That's nice. Um, Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the You're barbell. Right. The weights may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating, but it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Wow, we would absolutely die. No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber, the squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knee against the mat, and a whistle. What? Then Cable flame? the feeling is gone. What? It's just a memory. All right. Yeah, we're not doing this. We'd be dead. Oh, yeah, we don't know. We haven't unlocked it yet. We don't know. So you should also know two skills are directly tied to your health and morale. They are pain threshold and volition. If you are damaged in those, those skills will be weaker, but you can also level those up. Ah, okay. So volition, which we already are, are kind of all right on. And then you said pain threshold, which we could level up a lot, I guess, from having an item or something. endurance which we can't level up a lot all right okay well that's good to know <gasps> spooky the hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris looks like the remains of the 24-hour window repair shop Large demijohn. <laughs> That's definitely not how you say that word. Full of strange liquid. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Roger. Will do. Thank you. Oh, hell yeah, we're fucking loaded. Oh my god. We're going to go buy out the entire bookstore. A, a naked man mannequin torso. A strange yellow color. Alright, I've played Silent Hill. I know how this goes. 
Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. Oh my god, we've got so much fucking money. Holy shit. Wait, what was that? Oh, from holding tab. Is this Emma's Atelier? I don't know what that means. Um, did we miss anything? No. Excuse me, Kim. Oh, there's like an invisible wall or something right there. Remember the doorbells? It's all... Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Wait, no. We didn't go up into the apartment. What is this? Production schedule filament memory. What? Cube-like crisscross of filaments feels oddly fragile in your hands. It's intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads production schedule. Note, this filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Okay. Skis with slipstream printed on the limb. Oh, yeah. This is that place, I guess. Interesting. Some of these... I don't even know how to pawn items yet, so don't... Don't worry. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles. Holy shit, this is a cool drawing. Like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. These nice the pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin and even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. All right, so this is just where some nerds got together and played D&D. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured feverish mind? You should adopt one of those welkins as your persona. Hell yeah. No longer a mere man. <laughs> That's a good a idea drama. One of the welkins towering among the rest appears to be different however it's vara hamira a high welkin his face white and scarred like cracked marble this is clearly a welkin supremacist the note says <laughs> all non-welkin races will be purged the haldor the twarg the humans and even headless men all of them purged imagine a world filled only with welkin yes green welkin Dread welkin. This is how we're going to get by that big strong man. He's all, all about Simonese um, supremacy. And we're going to be like, no, 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 sir. I'm I'm, I'm a high welkin. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little welkin creatures. One of them is a welkin <laughs> supremacist. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. He does have a great beard. I mean, it, it's very clearly just a D&D game, right? Some people really like building a world. I yeah, think. okay. Even if it's just for a game. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have this so many questions. Like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Well, this has been educational. Let's just move on from the welcomes. Details. Some much effort. And for what? Or Battle of the century. <laughs> The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Yep. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg. Yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. All right. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, <laughs> a much-needed respite from our own. I really think that just going full-blown hardcore electrochemistry in this game would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> a pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy 
engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. All right. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minami, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Oh, okay. Minami stands for a yeah. mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. So this is less D&D and more a video game. As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer. Yeah, it's about to say, Swank. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, see the prod schedule filament for details. Unhinged drug addict cop who drinks at job. Yeah, that, I really feel like that would be a fun, fun go at partly it. Partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. All right. Um, did I, there was another thing in here. I don't actually know if I did it. I think I may have just inspect. Oh, no, I'm wrong. I thought that there was a thing I could click on in here. Fuck me. I guess I did. Whatever. So that's another stairway. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube shaped yeah, heart. Yeah, writing's and a real wide good. Framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on off button. A piece of paper still hangs from Which the is good, because I mean, if it wasn't. <laughs> That's that's literally the only thing the game really has is it's it's pure one hundred percent writing. The radio computer, just sitting here without anyone inside. You think I should turn it on? We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Writing and art, you're right. Uh, not in this run through, it doesn't. All right, let's turn the it on. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Yeah, if the writing was anything but great, it would... It would not be a fun time. But yeah, you're right. You guys are right. The, arts, the art is very, very, very good too. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Torment of Numeria was terrible. Eh. All right, look it's inside. Empty, like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling. Yeah, I never played the new Torment game. I never played the, the first Torment game. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside yes. the compartment. Yes, it would. Let's like put that shit in there. Draw, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Plus, plus pray. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Actually, like, I, I didn't mean to imply that everything else about the game is shit. I shouldn't have said that. The sound direction is also very, very, very good. I just meant that in terms of gameplay, it's just writing. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart? beginning to flutter the static gets louder slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out crackling and old cutting into the air good evening darkness accident on rue de saint this is east in Lindian repeat station uh, please repeat is this the production schedule <laughs> why did you call me fortress accent What's the production? The filament spot? you have inserted into the reader. You mean that glowing thing yes. I put inside? Is that the production schedule? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. Huh. You should ask her for a hint. Really bad. <laughs> Can you give no. me a hint? Fuck. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. Good idea suggestion, you piece of shit. <laughs> is it my birthday? Still no. 
This is the police. Please I open. am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for such accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. All right, drama. Tune in here. Tell them we got a warrant. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? Fuck. Received. I will register this login attempt. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning okay. up sooner or later. So we'll come back when we... Accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? <laughs> Are you a machine? Are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Oh, hey Yvonne. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Yvonne, my partner tells me that you're here because the radio computer guys are all paranoid. They are merely cautious. It's my job to protect their filaments as a password repeater at the East Insulindian Station. But where are you? How did you I know I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian <laughs> Repeater Station. I know. Station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radios. That sounds like a joyful time. Doesn't it get lonely sitting there all by herself? Lonely? <laughs> Why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. <laughs> That's why she does this. Alright, Swank, I'm on it. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for Fortress Accident. Okay, why are you calling me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. One moment. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's okay. what the catalog says. That's not bad. And that, and what's that? This interactive call radio. Any other game. questions? Okay. Thank you and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. So what happens if we print? print play and print keys. Sh nothing happens. All right. So let's remove the this. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. Surely nothing will happen if we. Nothing hit. happens. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll come back later when we got more stuff. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strange. Can't print ancient. without the password. Okay. And I would assume for summoning some time forgotten being. The symbols seem very esoteric. I would assume that the password has something to do with on what's on one of these boards here. Um, I'm wondering if I need to re-examine these things, this particular, this chalkboard, now that, you know, now that we know we're looking for a the password. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. How do I know what Cadran mosaic History tiles are supposed classes, to look like? Students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles look beautiful in the sun. Okay. Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.5. Right, right. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. The, anon the anatomy of Perhaps. the curse. The web is of comprised course. of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says. This one can listen in on any station it wants. It's a game. Whoever Who's decides playing? to call in to a call-in station, it looks like all of this is gone, left unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My God, it's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious they project <laughs> they can. The schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. Okay. Oh, we gotta talk to Kim. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? 
Hmm. Should have made pachinko machines. They should have given up their dreams of being video game developers, radio game developers, and made pachinko machines. So, someone tried to exercise the curse using technology. It's just a failed business. The only question is, what the hell were they yes, making? Yes, that is the question. I mean, they were making a, a radio game. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only yes. these people were trying to automate it. Make it Correct. work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks, as a compliment. Um... Has anyone Not ever done this before? Knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. What do you think no happened idea. to the company? They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Oh, that probably Indeed, went under. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the We Were board game, with heat death thrown in. <laughs> For good measure. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. <laughs> How are they planning on doing stations. that? None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game as long as they have a two-way radio. Man, what an impractical then there's idea. there's the game master frequency that listens in on the smaller calling stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Wow. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... They had to cheat money out of their investors' pockets. Um... Do we have any money? Let's give them money so they can finish and make it even bigger. We don't have money. <laughs> this would keep it company. Let's finish it. I. <laughs> it's too late right. for that, I'm afraid. Pipes howl and a rat crosses the floor. Okay, let's keep moving. Well, all right. Auto save. Your flashlight slides over some of the writing. Um, flashlight, some of let's the look at the notes just on the off chance. Legible, oh, but okay. you can still make out three. So we've got this thing to look at. Developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Oh. I didn't expect this to be door. Oh fuck yeah, we got so much goddamn money. What the? You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment. What an impractical fridge. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is this thing? It looks like a giant the ice bear. Doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out. We do. We have to ride the lighting, as Kuno door. says. Kuno just says shit. <laughs> All right, let's a look gust in. Of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Why is this man so afraid of a refrigerator? The shelves are empty. Uh? All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Oh, we have that, Sviatsala. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. Handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. So let's... You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Yeah, we got fucking magnets. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? It looks like an ice cream fridge. Okay, so they tried to sell ice cream from this hyper-conivore? What an unfortunate marketing choice. <laughs> what is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. Yeah. 
The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. <laughs> All right, so we got handwritten note from the fridge. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? Lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your this shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place. Yeah, with a ginger food. kid. Take care, Sully Swaff. Okay, so who's the illiterate ginger kid? We'll go ahead and ask this so that Kim can say Kuno. Really? You don't have a single guess? You mean Kuno? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed based on our encounter. So what's a filament memory? It inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes. So I mean, is, is this the thing I have already found? Where's the ice cream I don't maker? know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Well, wonder who wrote Looks that note. Like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. <laughs> Maybe it's because of the entity. That's implausible. <laughs> Kim, come on. So we've got... Uh... Oh, this is the production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the production schedule. Whereas... In theory, there could be another one for the actual game. An ice cream maker defrosted and unplugged. Hey, this is the thing. What is this? Flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. Alright, how do we get there? Aha. Oh. We'll never know what that said. Someone is... Stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling? What? A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Look, there's a hole in the wall. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Yeah, I'll take a look. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs rummaging around you find rusty rifles <laughs> hidden away rifles are these kim any good most of them are rusty and inoperable like the rest but one catches your eye a bolt action model all right with a fine here we go stock in better cosmetic order than the others take it you're a police officer police officers carry guns true that's a rare sight Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. What does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. So... Nice. Wow, this sells for very little. This is now my gun. <laughs> This is the new gun. We can't hold it, but we're we're a pacifist cop. So there's the ice cream maker, and that's where the fucking thing is supposed to be. Excuse me, Kim. Sorry, Kim. A frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Hell yeah. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. All right, so try to you crack it open. slip your fingers under the frozen lid. Oh, but no. the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. We the have pry a pry bar. bar. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand. All right, all right, all right. All right. Fine, fine, fine. Oh, hell yeah, we're Gordon Freeman now. This orange machine is buzzing like an old ah, submarine. Fuck. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top <laughs> and an electric freezer 
that appears to be frozen shut. What the fuck? Okay, so we need a super pry bar, I guess. What about these chain cutters? Huh? This orange machine is but I'm afraid if I try to turn the crank, it will destroy what is in there. Yeah. This orange machine is oh, buzzing. We can like hold on. Quick save. Old submarine. There we go. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. <laughs> well, I was just it gonna leave this unchecked, but the people demand it. Top. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the di it's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. All right. Well, that didn't do us anything. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker. Okay, nearby. so there wasn't anything in... An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. And presumably this is plugged into the ice cream Something maker. Something close to you dies with a soft Cool, so burn. if we give it time... Why did you do that? Well... This is black, the color of the immeasurable cosmos. Uh, because we need this to thaw out, Kim, but I don't have that answer here to tell you, so, um. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. Intercom wires running into the breaker box. Aw, oh, yes! We got new clothes. Oh my god, we look so fucking fashionable. <laughs> We're even worse now at, at physical activity, but we've got a stupid tank top on. Um, okay, so now that we've unplugged this, it's probably not going to be immediately easier. This orange machine is dead still all right gotta put this here this orange machine is dead still oh my god a hand cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer so we have to find a much nicer fry bar Woo. we got some money um there's this here. There's also one room in the next to the D&D den. No, it's not a D&D den, but that's what I'm going to call it that we did not explore. Oh, there was more in that room right there. Oh, I must have walked right by. Maybe. Huh. All right, Kim. Which chat tells me there's more? I always forget that I can zoom out. That's how- <gasps> Money! Fuck yeah. Cellar window, people's feet shuffling by on the street. So that's the secret room. Ah, I see. The wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black looks like this furnace has a face and it's a face of agony kim what is this thing is it a furnace looks like it looks like an old central furnace used like to how helpless building. we are it's connected to the chimney no one has used it in ages no signs of any recent fire only dead rats look inside it's the dark furnace and grimy here in the darkness you can hear chatter is coming from above a voice or several voices talking to each other near the smoke chamber also it's nine o'clock didn't in that when kim said we oh 10 o'clock okay Fuck. what are you doing okay um 
<laughs> I'm not sure, Kim, but I think Wait, I can hear someone really? talking upstairs. We should investigate. See if someone's upstairs. Okay, so we could change our clothes and get another plus one there. Um, I'm not going to smear my hands with coal. You're right. The rooms do look like they're connected. But malignant entities don't exist. At least not the supernatural kind. Always has to be the skeptic, this man. Fine, we'll do it. A lush layer of coal Fine. now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. My hands your are hands ancient. Look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karazai, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. <laughs> yes. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. What? What are you doing? I am the reincarnation of an ancient Ilmaran warrior. Please wipe your face clean, officer. No, you're a proud warrior. <laughs> Keep it. I'm not wiping it. These three stripes give you strength in this dangerous realm. It would be foolish to remove them. We're exploring this dark place, and I need the protection my war paint affords. And this protects you. This is traditional war paint. It will grant me safe patch. Actually, we're going to go with it gives me confidence. Okay, not all sure. Those go ahead. Wow. It did hurt. It did help us. All right. So let's put uh, this on. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace. Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Hello? You've awakened the entity. <laughs> <laughs> I summon the ghosts of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit. Oh, great. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. After Excellent. You, uh, I mean, it's not like we can just walk up there. Dust. Right? But maybe that's the stairwell that we passed earlier. I'm not gonna kick it. <laughs> I took a point of damage from turning on a fucking light earlier. Kicking it would definitely hurt my feet. Or worse, ruin my shoes. Mm. Shoes in the puddle of melting snow. Oh, this is... There's not a curtain up here. Postcard. La Delta. 51. Um, yeah, man. I'm just fucking great like that, Swank. Oh, a person. <laughs> Why is there a person here? This tray is full of dice, colorful polyhedral dice, hundreds of them. Candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. Oh my God, it's a dice goblin. Hello, I'm Nia. A bird-like woman sits on a throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. Hmm. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Um... You must have me confused with someone else. I haven't knocked then on you. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Hold on, what do you mean by yes. Amelia? Amelia is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. <laughs> but some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. Alright, well, 
I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? Hmm. <laughs> um. Okay, sure, I like role-playing games. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set. What the fuck? Unless you want something really unusual. Finish the swear words. Take a look around and see if there's any particular stone you want to use. Walls around her are covered with rows of precious it stones. It almost looks as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shells like stalagmites. This person means you, or no one else, absolutely no harm. Yeah, I like she this lady a lot. freely and honestly. No falsehoods are present. She's a novelty dice maker and doesn't have anything to hide. Ask what you need. Man, um, game is real serious about about me knowing that this woman means absolutely no harm in any way, shape, or form. What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. When I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. That is a plus. <laughs> Great, now we get to ask her about the curse. Claysons was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Creative. Tenant looks around the spacious room and ceiling fading into shadows. Um, how'd you become how a dice maker? How did I become one? Hello, Firefly. It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Do you like role playing Not especially. games? especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. Yeah. Some of those nice people have big bucks to spend on novelty items. Yeah. She's thankful for the security they provide her. What do you know about Nothing the man who- really. I didn't know him. Who cares about the dead body? Ask her about the curse already. I care about the, the dead The lieutenant body. looks at his notebook. Then, the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. And you never took your eyes off the work to look out I the window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. Mm. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. You often work on Sunday it's nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people. But I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. Alright, thank you. I mean, daily ruckus is so obvious. She nods. Anything else, officer? Um, I've heard this place is cursed. <laughs> Did you know that people call it the doomed commercial I've area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. Placence is the one who sent me. She's convinced that this Placence, place is swarming. the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? Placence is a wise woman. She has so many trinkets. Placence is not a wise woman. Bookstore isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers. Jesus. Curse is just biding its time. This game is a book, yes. Curse is just biding its time before it strikes again. Jesus. I don't know why the bookstore hasn't gone bankrupt yet. Um, we're going with two. All right. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. The whirling is part of the doomed commercial area? Um, <laughs> this is going to allow us to ask for money. And then there is me. 
I've been here for 14, 14 years, years. Selling Holy novelty shit. dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Maybe it's just because she's so talented that she's been able to woo the curse. Because you're competent and dedicated to your craft, the curse doesn't affect people like you. <laughs> kind of on the nose. Um... I'll be the first to admit that there are many inconsistencies in this so-called curse. I was just about to ask, what do you think? Do you think the curse is real? Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. There is literally a man hanging from a tree, like 30 feet outside this window, and poor Kim... Poor Lieutenant Kim is bumbling around with this idiot asshole wearing a fedora and gardening gloves, shining a light into the face of this woman, talking about the curse in this furnace of this derelict building. Ah. <sighs> Starting to see there is no curse, only business decisions and natural market flow. Exactly. Truth is always You're right, he's so not going anywhere. mundane and boring. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? Yeah, what do we... Report back to Placence. Great. Yes, and a mesh shirt. That's all she has to say on the subject. She's been thorough and truthful, as far as we could see. Placence is not going to like what well, you have Well, Placence to is... The bookstore closes starting 2100. <gasps> You'll have to do that tomorrow. Ah, poop. Okay, um, you know what happened to the other tenants? Are you interested in anyone specific? Oh, quite a lot of them sprung to mind. Um, found creepy mannequins? There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. I didn't know insects had any rights, or activists. Yeah, the atelier didn't know it either. They produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from bitter wings. But if we fail and we take damage, Swank. Then you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. I know, but you have no way of knowing which failed checks you will take damage from. That's actually, I was thinking about this yesterday, that's that's not a complaint, but it's definitely a side effect of having, like, of taking damage on one of the very first checks that I had, um, is that now I'm hesitant to do many off-the-wall checks. Um... But insects don't have any Actually, brains or feelings. insects do have brains. But yes, I understand what you're saying. I think the protesters took it a little too far. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. <laughs> Later, <laughs> well, I wouldn't have been such a sissy if I had more than literally two health. Anything else? Found a strange Portrait machine? Accident, the radio game studio. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into it, fisticuffs. You're, you're not wrong, hero. Action Hawk. I, I'm, these are not excuses, they're explanations. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. Mm. The usual... Another death at the hands of liberalism. ...and get the project done on time. Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear the chit chat. They Britain. seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. She sounds almost mocking when she says that. From what I've seen, the project yes, did look quite but impressive. When the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. Mm -hmm. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic. 
I think I've been. Show up to work on I can't think of any checks besides this one that I I was probably not gonna do because it's like a three percent. But I think anything above like a thirty percent chance I've tried. She's right. If it was Showing something that I time is important. thought I would do. Some of the failed cheat checks have hidden content. Oh, interesting. Um. In the end, they didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic. That's too bad. I would have supported them. Project looked great. Showing up to work on time is incredibly hard. You're right. They should have just tried harder. Not the wisest decision. Hey, we leveled up. You would have lost all your savings. She tosses a pair of dice on the table. One of them stops near the edge of them. The dice like is black and filled with little silvery flakes like snowfall. Anything else? Oh my gosh. All right. Um, bear oh, in the boy. cellar? The fabled Revo show ICT. You're in for a treat here. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Indeed. What were the other ideas? What were their other there ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. Sounds but like she really didn't like those girls. I was just about to say, she works at the Frit. Employing soaky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. I'm talking about acne-ridden girlfriends and grill-like boyfriends mm. loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Ravishow ICT. And they already had the bear. <laughs> what about the bear? It didn't of work out. Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either. And half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. I feel like you could really market a bear holding ice cream in its stomach pretty well. Like, they market Coke with bears Eventually, around the Christmas time. Eventually, the Ravishow lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only five cents apiece. Out of sure <laughs> the bear was doing its best. <laughs> I killed the bear. You did what? I had to kill the bear to become the bear. Gash station ices have polar bear mascot beast. He's cool and wears sunglasses. I think the sunglasses may be what, what makes it safe. I murdered it with my own bare hands. I laid it to rest. They missed a really good pun here. Or maybe they did and it just wasn't super on the nose and that's what makes it funny. I unplugged the fridge to help Revishaw Ice City cut oh, their losses. Of course they left it plugged in. Even in death, the bear is costing them money. The taxidermist who made it said it was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. He called it Megatherian. <laughs> Sounds cool. <laughs> What's Megatherian, <laughs> a mega wild beast. What's a mega it's wild an beast? an imaginary beast that guides you through life <laughs> okay. by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. The horrific necktie tightens around your neck, strangely excited. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. <laughs> Uh, I don't have a comment on drugs. Understandable. You shouldn't do them. You're a police officer after all. Mm. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. Anything else? Another okay. Um, perhaps? Most of these I've I don't care about. Time. Um, yeah. I good. think I'm good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? I don't have the money to order die. Um, all right, we're gonna roll the dice here. You feel nothing. Mm. If anything, it's uncomfortably warm in here. Oh, hell yeah, we gotta take off these Excuse clothes. Excuse me, what are you doing? Dice maker stares at you while you start to fuss with your pants. <laughs> it's part of the special technique I have. And what technique is that? She squints at you, a little astonished at what she's hearing. Still haven't gotten your zipper open. Okay, hear me out. Sometimes I get these Please, feelings. I apologize for my colleague's behavior. He's still recovering from an unusual medical episode. Kim, don't Officer, try and make this okay. This isn't how mature adults deal with their feelings. 
Now you feel something. The cold oh, well, there we go. of shame washing over you. Like I can feel the wind or I don't know, the air pressure and then the air tells me things. The air pressure told you to take your pants off in my studio? It did. This is not going very well, is it? Word wise. Yes. Can you please employ this special technique somewhere else? I work here and my work requires concentration. Half naked people don't help with that. <sighs> Alright, well, that's that. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's true. We just didn't commit enough to getting fully butt naked for her. We're the cowards. We let her down. Also, would I have taken moral or mental, whatever it is, damage had I just immediately backed off of that? Because I don't want to immediately back off of things. It's fun to like, you know, like really commit to the, the stupidity when the stupidity is on a failed check. Yeah. Um, and that's that. So how do we... An old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East, East Delta Commerce Center. This Weird. must Hold be on. the name of the doomed commercial. Our theory. friends at Silence. No one's home. Wherever it was. Um, accident. Yeah, but we gotta go have a circle up with Kim here in a moment. Oh my gosh, so we have to run all the way to our room? Is that what you're saying? Where was, they said they opened a curtain for us. An old called East Delta Commerce Center. But this must be the name. I of the thought it was this one, area. but I guess it wasn't. Oh, I went through the curtain? Oh, it was, did I? <laughs> Where was it? Oh, okay. So something that I passed through was previously blocked off, is what you're saying. Um, this is still frozen. This orange right? machine is okay. dead. Hmm. So let's see. We can go talk to Placence. Is it? It's not going to automatically transport me back to my room to go have this conversation with Kim, right? That would be nice. Can't talk to Placens. Store is closed. You're correct. So I guess we just have to go back to our room. Oh, but... We can't... There was a reason we couldn't get in our room, right? Did I talk to you? Yes, it is all about money. Poop! Hmm. So, <laughs> what do I do now? Things are closed. Oh no, what happened? Huh. Oh yeah, no, you're right, it is. Why is that? Is it just in this room? Well, we all know that Disco Elysium is a highly intensely demanding game. Obviously. 
Okay, yeah, we're... Huh, weird. It's just that one little bit, I guess. Book is titled Man from Him Himdal Fire. Well. Bag in your hand, perhaps you could collect these bottles and sell them. I wish I had a bag in my hand. Apeside Apartments. Roundabout North. Oh, wait, what's that? <gasps> a bag! That's not the thing I need. Or is it? This coin operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. Poor little viewer. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word owner written on the other side with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno. Yes, thank you. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross. Kuno's a fucking terror. Star. You know this to be the star of Perikonesis, or the Cairo, the central symbol of the Perikonesian church. The church looks old and weather-worn. Vandalism. The windows. Probably some kids. <laughs> yeah. Probably some kids. Where was the... fucking money? Or the, the bottles? This coin-operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 sentences and pull the handle while looking in. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? What's a tourist there attraction? There was a revitalization during? project in 49. A design studio right. tried restoring Martinez to its pre-war glory. It didn't stick. They got as far as the street lamps and the statue on that intersection. Then something went sour. I suspect that something was Eva Claire, the union leader. Hmm. He muscled them out. It's how it usually goes around here. We should have done something about the Union ten years ago. That ship has sailed, officer. Well, shit. So... Oh, we have to equip the bag. And now... Oh my god, the cans are... The money's flowing. Oh, we're gonna get so much money. <laughs> Hobo cop rides again. Listen, boy, I don't start trouble. I fix it. What is Kim? What is this? Splatter of bullet holes on the wall. All right, Kim. Well, wow, this just keeps going. Lonely Cormorant surveys the sea, indifferent to your approach. Holy shit! Okay, more directions. Inside, the frame of a motorcycle and repair tools used to disassemble it. There's a girl up there. Did she hey, spill the paint? Up here, Pico. Okay. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> yeah, there you go, Kim. Cindy Tell him. the fucking skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. <laughs> yeah, when were you I last tested? had a battery of tests just last week. I'm practically a patchwork of interesting critters. 
kind of like a man o' war. Despite the attitude, she puts the brush She's grown aside. frustrated with her work and welcomes the opportunity to challenge authority in other ways. Keep looking off to the side. What are you looking for? She looks at? disdainfully toward the woman performing maintenance on the boat docked next to the pier. Mm. Hatred, disgust. It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That's a well put together portrait. That Ozon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago two days travel away from Rivershaw. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit Martinez. All right. Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Oh, hell yeah. Throwing her off wacky. is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. You know anything I about the recent murder? snitch, pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. He is so Actually, cut. there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. What do I care about some fucking tin eggshells? It's tin. Ugh, all right. Sad piggy. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in a fishing village running around with military-grade handwear. Look cute as hell. So... Join him on the balcony. Okay. If you haven't been there, the village is a shithole down the... Piggy, I have no idea. Watch See your ya. back. Kim, we have to go. We have a meeting. We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. You should take care of that, then. Don't have the Let's money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. Okay. We'll figure something out. Though he finds this situation frustrating, he is doing his best to not make you feel any worse. Than Kim's a good bloke. Do. All right, Kim. this a path oh my goodness okay there's a lot to explore yeah Kim Kim is probably the most patient person in any game ever is this the thing that I can no the tear machine is elsewhere. Wait, I found another bottle. Ooh. Great Teutonic forces crack the pavement like an eggshell. All right, we have so many fucking bottles, guys. We probably have a dollar worth of bottles. <laughs> Everything's so expensive. All right, so this is apparently gonna lag for some reason. Can I help you? Oh, well. Didn't Kim just say we should talk to this guy? No? All right, let's go upstairs. Yeah. Okay, we got it. We got got this tip. It came back. Hey. Yes. <laughs> what, what about do you the want case? To know? 
Um, What's there to say? It's kind of stupidity. stupidity. The cop kind. Our prescience can decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor. Yours or mine, as if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the Union make a mockery of law enforcement here. And now it's come to its natural conclusion. Well, sort of. It's less a matter of who gets to police Martinez than mm -hmm. who has to. Okay. I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. There was quite the brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest with 102 cases solved. What I am is least interested in a pissing competition. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> I was sent to teach you okay. a lesson in style. Style me. It's impossible to tell whether he's serious or joking. You should ease up a bit. You need more no, looseness. No, I don't. I used to. Plain clothes did the trick. For both of us, it seems. No. Was there anything else you wanted to ask about the competition? If not, we should move. Yes, it's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. He's actually glad it's addressed now. Um, why did they send me? Because you're mm. the best qualified. No, that doesn't seem right. Some brain, I'm good for nothing. You look dumb if you keep the lieutenant waiting for too long. All right. So we completed that. We need try negotiating with cafeteria manager. Okay. Join him on the whirling and rags balcony after 2200. I think that's where we are, but apparently we're not here enough or something. Maybe it's just another conversation I need to have with or another one of those uh, trees. Let's put this mesh shirt on. Take this off. We still got our bag though. That's important. Um, um, oh wait, what's that? Nothing on the front page ring. Oh, we can sneak out after it's gone to sleep. Huh. Can I help you? About that yes. money I owe you. Have you got it? Please. Does that let arrangement me include to... you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? It's cold out. I'll freeze to death because I'm losing the stupid money game. Actually, we'll let Kim speak. Kim is better at communication than I am. I understand your predicament as the manager. However, I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Exactly. Exactly. We, we fully transitioned to hobo. Just hobo. Not even really so much cop. Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking and... He shrinks back a bit under the lieutenant's severe gaze. I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. I still have my Good key, you know. Good luck trying to use it. Oh my goodness. All the locks have an electronic component. They have to be unlocked down here with a master key before your guest key will open the lock. Alright, this conversation isn't Not going until anywhere. until you bring me the money. Okay. I might have something in my motto carriage we can use when you're done here. I really didn't want to resort to this. The man is thinking. Oh, Lieutenant, we're done here. It. Where do I sell items? Oops. Whoa. I mean, I have a lot of items that surely I could trash and get the money. Uh, maybe the frit is still open? I can check that. I guess we should check this carriage first. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the f I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. We'll look in the suspect the transport. at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. 
Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. The silver edges sparkle. Oh in my the dark. god, we're selling hubcaps. I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. What do you mean you a couple weeks ago, them. I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. Turns out he was some coalition official son and high. Isn't that corruption? I don't know. Is it? I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. <laughs> don't you want no, these bitchin' no, wheels that, that for would yourself? Be silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. I couldn't put them on this MC anyway. A cop with spin Outrageously cool. Outrageous. He flashes a smile, barely visible in the dark. Sorry you have to sell them because As of I me. said, they are useless anyway. I should have remembered I have these earlier. But thank you. Yeah, man, I don't want to sell these things. God. Yes, there's one 100 meters south of here. I think it's called Roy's Nest or something. If I'm not mistaken, it should be open late. I mean, if if our boy Kim here wants ridiculous wheels, I don't want to be the single thing in the world that stops him from his one moment of silliness. I wish I could see my inventory to see how much shit I can sell. If I choose that I don't want to take them, can I come back and later take them? There are spinner hubcaps, frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. A vanity he wouldn't mind. I No, I'll, I'll be homeless. I can sleep outside one day. All right, let's not take them now. Then, come back once we realize we have to have this conversation again, and then... Come on, Kim. Give me a chance Sounds to be the good guy. Likely. Okay. So what do we have that we could sell? <laughs> Fucking nothing. I mean... This isn't going to total up to a hundred at all. There's no way. Okay, yeah, let's see if the frit's open and then we can go look at Roy's. Lights seem on. Okay. I mean, we're nowhere close to having hundred. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. It is a shame that we're not getting more money from this. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. Actually, I don't think I picked up 16 You're bottles, right? I'm sure you got special hobo cop money for that tear. At least 100% extra tear money. If the numbers on the machine told you otherwise, it's Okay, a lie. so maybe I did pick up 16 bottles. Fuck, Kim, I don't want to steal your goddamn hubcaps. What a shit show. Alright, Kim. Alright. Look, I'll pay you back Inside, or something. Alright. A radio mic. I have something here. The cage. Uh, I confiscated this for a little while. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. Sorry, Kim. Okay, so south of here. And you found it doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. We're not going to get too distracted. We're just going to look specifically for Roybert's. Look at yourself up. It's actually hard to... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too beaten up about it, but I wish I could have found the money. Roy's Pawn Shop. Wait, what about this? Hell yeah, fingerless gloves. We want better 
We want more electrochemistry. Shut up, Firefruit. Rude. Oh boy, there's a lot going on here. Um, what kind of machine? An antique cash register? Bust of a woman. Dark a film's projector is whirring away. The boom boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped, dented, they stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boombox that says Stereo 8 approved. This is you. Golden orange. A sunset suite. Is the Harman Walsh W2. Made in Vespa. Designed in Seoul. Plays all reel to reel format. 2mm, 8mm, 12mm. <laughs> It's even got a little radio in there. How shitty would it It'll be? Set you back for twelve rounds with Kim. If right police here. work means playing tapes, sure. Like a beach party, with sand and sun and seagulls dancing on the breeze. Kim, could I bring this to a beach party? Theoretically, yes, but we don't have time right now. It's generally murder investigation first, then beach party. Actually, it doesn't have to be the beach. You can play it anyway. All right, fine. <sighs> what you about see this? rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Oh, it's cheap Some money to not upset Kim. Back. It's a noble Others goal, which will rags. definitely justify Others that. yet in bright yeah. blue uniforms. Yeah. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Try to find something pretty and cool here. Then use it to win her back. In her yes. back? Buy something nice. A figurine. Alright, we gotta roll the dice here. Everything you pick Fuck. out seems faded, chipped, and sad somehow. Most of them are just broken toys. I mean, I'm sure we'll find tapes at some point. A typical Martinez. But I don't want to spend Kim's money. <laughs> assorted floor and table lamps. The light pole has been carefully cut. And the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but this would make quite a statement in your living room. How much for the street light? Seven hundred real. A bargain, I dare say. Holy shit! Even taking into account a risk of obtaining light, that seems a bit steep. There's also the matter of rewiring. But the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures which has adjusted its morphological field the light became yeah. suitable for use inside the home just a few days i don't ago. need to know shit about it that's an insane price you'll never get it mostly military wear all right look it's not often that i see officers from the rcm in my pawn shop i'm upset what can i do for you i have to the sell kim's stuff insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls. Sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting you. Oh no, not at all. I guess I haven't had many customers lately, RCM or otherwise. Who are your customers usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake, people who are terminally bored. Fuck, I wish I had found the armor. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Typical <laughs> vacuous consumerist objects. Uh. May have it something to add to it. Entertained. His attention is one. Entertained? Oh. He might be high. If he is, on what? What's he high on? Feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light while the mind continues to race forward. Lucky bastard. Really? The armor counts as clothes? It's For tough real? to come by on the street. I would not have expected that. I would have assumed that the armor could be sold. 
but I guess I guess not. All right. I mean, they even specifically mentioned how much the money was, or how much the, the armor cost. A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects, and Whoa. it makes your eyes turn yellow. I'd like to check Why your eyes. Why on earth? These are prescription. I can't really see without them. He's fucking lying. There's a note of indignation in his voice. Interesting. Those triangle patches on his vest. You have a feeling they mean something. Like they're similar to the halogen rectangle on your jacket. So, what's with the I triangles? Was, I was with the emergency relief brigade. You know, after the people's power I like how we're just disaster. coming in swinging on this guy. Had to tape Rolodon for radiation sickness. That's what you were hinting at just now, wasn't it? He's yes. taken for mental and emotional, not physical pain these days. Must have been tough. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened, and why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment, an early death, cancer mostly. And we knew all that was coming, even as we were cleaning up as best we could. No ones. Everyone's. So much bitterness. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor, hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? All right, you may have just answered what the people- A bad violence. idea. Some poor leftist built a particle decay generator in hopes of bringing affordable electricity to underserved communities. It malfunctioned. Radioactive waste everywhere. Holy Probably shit. Probably some of it in you too. The People's Pile was a Type U particle decay generator that failed immediately after entering service, releasing radioactive waste into River Esperance. So, it's obvious why it's called the People's Pile. Began during the commune of Revachon. The yeah. people continued work on it after the commune Chernobyl for they sure. wanted a cheap source of energy for Revachon West. Needless to say, things But instead of the government work. trying to cover it up, everything just exploded immediately. A primitive nuclear reactor, also called a pile. An emergency valve defect resulted in steam pressure blowing the turbine, taking the fuel containment vessel up in the explosion. Both God the damn. faulty design and lack of finances contributed to the catastrophe. Tell me more about this. We were an all-volunteer force, self-organized, tried to help the fire brigades contain the spill. I lived by the river since I was a small boy. The Esperance didn't have the art to let it all go to shit without trying to do something to help out. Roy seems like an alright guy. Also, it's cool that, like, I don't know, the Electrochemistry actually let me know that this guy was on drugs, and then the fact that he's on drugs is because of this other thing. There wasn't much cool the all volunteer ties force could do, however. We wasted years in the river mud. Years getting sick. How did you end up running on shot? The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later, my second aunt died. Left me this shack and all the assorted junk in it. So I came to Martinez. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. <laughs> I said, people, we just had a nuclear pile meltdown. I'm gonna get as far away from Forberg as I can. Still in the same city, but... I like the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not mm. vortices. Yeah. You gotta get in on those vortices, my man. God. Um. Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. Fuck. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you've met before. Oh God. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another, alert. She didn't seem like a policeman, although she kept referring to herself as a pig, which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit 
All right, obsessive. so... But I was just happy to get rid of it. And of her. So she referred to herself as a pig. Cindy and Kuness, or whatever her name is, would say the things. Truth be told, she was terrifying. I wouldn't refer to either of them as terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm, issued by the citizen's militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Miraculously, his face does not reveal <laughs> what's happening inside. Maybe she's a vigilante, wants to prove she can do our jobs better than we can. I don't like it either. What if she intends to commit a crime and blame it on the citizens? Uh, we are sorry, cop. I think we just have to apologize. <sighs> yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this mess up somehow, while also keeping our focus on the murder investigation. Jesus. This mess. He means your mess. All right, where can I find My the buyer? apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she was coming from. Come on, but you've got to have went. something. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. I mean, but she's not... I, I'm assuming my current thought is that this person is not actually a cop. So calling themselves a pig is like they were pretending or something. You... Uh, you were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service. But you're right. It is. It is still self-deprecating. Kunes would not do that. Cindy might. We haven't talked and to I her. Don't Good like lord! It's guns almost eleven o'clock. For long, off the charts photon emissions. He's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. Oh no! We you gotta figure it out. Quiet yourself, officer. You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and that you can't trust yourself with it tonight. Jesus. When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. I should have killed myself. Then I agreed to take it. Fifteen Rael. Fifteen The lieutenant Rael. looks from you to Roy and then back to you. It's clear that he hopes this tableau might still turn out to be a bad dream. That's this has shitty. got to be the most. Wow. There's pity there too. In case you didn't notice. No apologies necessary, officer. <laughs> I just got an achievement. Literally the sorriest cop. <laughs> oh my god. Of course. Okay. Um so yes. I want to sell We'd like to sell these hubcaps. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects. Yes. These are very very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mesk banger. No matter. I'll give you 200 rial. Oh my god. All right. So we can sell it. No one was defrauded or jumped. I assure you. Of course. I meant no offense. 200 real for you, officer. Thank you. Whoop. Here's the 100 real you need for your bill. Do not waste it. Okay, that's good. Kim, I couldn't your be trusted with the money anyways. Him. To compensate for the pain of being separated from his radiant spinners, the windfall is a small consolation. Anything else you're thinking of selling? I'd like to sell my clothes, I'm too. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. Damn and it. especially that tie. It swallows photons around it. Your mother is a necrotic object! I'm fun! Look at me sparking in the light of the projector! Um... Oh, no. I don't like those kinds of objects. A photic path, counter-radiance network, anti-magnetism. Like it's dark. Uh, we can come and That's talk to him I tomorrow. Know. You have absolutely no idea what a photic baths are, but the tattoos on the man. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Okay, so some of this we should sell. I'm not going to pawn the Kim's handkerchief. That's a dick move. But, oh, and this is his pin. Uh, but these postcards surely are not worth anything besides pawning, right? 
You know what? We don't actually need to pawn anything. Another time, perhaps. We're leaving. DS2 remaster. What DS... What is DS2? Surely you don't mean Dark Souls 2. Oh, gotcha. Um, no, I've not played Dark... Dark Diablo 2. Aw, <laughs> oh, Kim, I feel really fucking bad about your fucking spinners. That weren't yours, but still. Can I help you? Yes, have you got it? Well. Well, let's just be sorry, cops more. Great, thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you have money, he really wants to make sure you're not angry with him. The electronic lock to your room has been disabled till 9 p.m. tomorrow. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. What the fuck? I'm gonna have to pay I you more money? Of course. Always happy to have offices from the RCM as gift. Shit. <laughs> find more money for tomorrow. God damn it. I, yeah, I can't pay. Uh, wait, 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 what was that? You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. I Who knows what you are? A monster, a murderer, the gnome of Jeroma. You feel like a smoker, especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub. Ooh, uh. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. Jesus Sorry Christ. That. A carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied. Then smoke them all. The idea seems to make your neck expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. Like a cat rubbing itself against its owner's calves. A cat that wants you to smoke a lot. I'll think about it. Good. Thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Make sure you think about juicy sticks of tobacco or Jesus and when Christ. you're done thinking about them. Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses. All right. So, I make this electric chemistry check. The door to the room you Wait. redecorated. Just a moment. You had some questions Yes, earlier, okay, good, good, good. And besides, we should discuss... All right. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Where shall we begin? We should talk about the investigation. He's got a cigarette. Foremost. But I also remember you wanting to discuss the RCM. I didn't know you smoked, Kim. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh boy. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. <sighs> How, how'd you get so cool, you Kim? Mean, this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Do you have any more I cigarettes? But I only brought one with me. I have exactly one cigarette every night while going over my notes. Okay, that's fine. Yes. It's been a long and even full. So, how do you think it went today? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. I would say our initial inspection was very thorough, and we have solid leads to follow up on. The body is still hanging from that tree, which is unfortunate. Yeah, that is unfortunate. There's still much to do at the crime scene. Is there? He is not particularly satisfied with your progress, but he doesn't want you to feel completely discouraged. 
probably out of fear that you'll just give up. I mean, it, okay, so we gotta cut the body down, but there's not that much more to do with the crime scene, right? Besides rub Kuno's fucking face in it. I'm just not... <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not this much of a sorry cop. I we'll be in better shape tomorrow. As for the interviews, we weren't able to find the union leader, Evra Claire. Much less interview him. Yes, Could that is to do. To do <laughs> we didn't talk to the Wild Pines rep. We really must do that tomorrow. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Yeah, man. We gotta get places fast. What are you talking about? I have a really good theory about why you're running so fast, son. Just you wait until you get up tomorrow. Yeah. We gotta move fast. My mom moves fast. The rest has to keep up. Keep it's up. impressive. Especially for a man your age. And in those hills. Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. So, what are that our powers exactly? Culture. The power officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Wouldn't that be easy yes, to view? although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. We are not really supposed to play any part in the economic structure of Ravashal. Mm. We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station closely. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. And if someone resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in the watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. What happens you have to if supply we... compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone, hmm. which is for the best. So what happens to the people we, we convict? convict? We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Proven and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. Who makes these the calls? coalition government and the moral intern more worthy. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Ravachol or the coalition government formed in the RCM. Okay. Silence. A great comment to such a conundrum. Try my best. The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. I really don't know. That's how bad it is. Okay. They are a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental Jesus. organizations. Jesus, okay. <laughs> Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and usual. <laughs> Something almost self-explanatory. Something ominous. Something even a little feminine. But in a strict manner. What do they believe in? They are DeLoreans. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Those others say they continue the humanist project set forth by Dolores Day. All right, so who's Dolores Day? The historic Day? figure, the author of the modern age. You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. Okay. The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. It is more than that. There's some kind of affection in him. You like the moral? Yes, I did. When I was younger, 
In my twenties, I considered myself a moralist. A blue forget-me-not, a piece of the sky. They're not all that bad. Huh, they didn't read this. That's another light motif. Associated with more. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. Do you? The lieutenant arches his brow then pulls on a cigarette. It's a slim white thing and it's They're bad out here. You're giving us the right to please rubbish. Done an off job here. Have you seen this place? This isn't you. Your stooge is the world's biggest bourgeois organization protecting bourgeois. Immigrants, liberal kits, fucking men are turning into women. Jesus. Second thought, I don't have an opinion. Forget about it. They've done, an aw they've done an awful job here. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the EMI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. We should make our own law. Spoken like a revolutionary, not a cop. <laughs> I am the but law. Hypothetical aside, in Martinez, we already are vigilantes. At least the Union thinks so. I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. It's different in land in Jamrock and the GRIH. It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the Union, to the company, not daring to come here more often. This place has fallen between the cracks, the jurisdictions of our two prisons. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. She's got, what, fuck cops or all cops are bad or something down there? Makes sense. We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. He looks at the dark silhouette of the equestrian monument cutting it's into the It's incredibly sky. hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. I feel like it's already kind of doing that. Night. Captain Ptolemy Price steps into the yard. A piebald horse waits by the motor carriage, chewing oats out of an oat bag. Seagulls fly overhead. The sky is black. Captain Price wears a black suit and a standard patrol coat as he mounts the horse to head home. I feel like maxing out a uh, spirit decor corpse, however you say it, would also be a fun thing to have. Just to, <laughs> like this is also kind of a supernatural, you're just experiencing something else, elsewhere. Rows of houses on either side, hunching over the sidewalks and Precinct 41 with its dome roof growing distant. Around him, the streets are silent. A kid on the corner waves at the captain as he takes the turn on Petition and Main. The horse neighs. The captain nods back. Don't know for sure, but my guess is that maxing it out would be the best way to relate to kid. Thanks, kid. Maybe he so. Thinks. He's grateful. Yeah, I, I really do think a cheat run would be neat. It would be... Um, I mean, it would be a shit ton of text. Holy God. Hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. At least do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes. In all hey, I just past. got another achievement. What is this? Goodest of the good cops. We really got Kim to trust us. Fuck yeah. We did it. He likes us. Or trusts us, at least. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. Puts out the stub of a cigarette and looks to the door. Nice chatting with you, Kim. Also learn more about the characters. Yeah, true, true. Um, done this, right? No, sort of. Yeah, I have to call Alice back. This is almost done. We don't have anything else. You can ask woman and boat for money. Oh, we haven't even made it there. We haven't, we did not speak to her yet. 
And now it's bedtime. See you in the morning. Oh, I guess... I guess we could go out and about while Kim is asleep. Jesus Christ. This is a shithole. Cheat run would mean having 24 personality facets and a tie arguing in your head all the time. Yeah, it'd be crazy. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Oh, right. I remember that. Everyone speaks English, but everything is named. True. All right, we're just going to go to bed. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. Like we've had the previous the night was such a coarse and clammy against your skin. The such a banger. Need a night off as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. And then sleep doesn't come. Fuck. And then, sleep doesn't come. But I want to sleep. Obviously, you're in bed with your eyes closed. But Why? But maybe it's the bed's fault. Check the pillow. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. Check the blanket. It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. Under your thrumming eyelids, you see a dizzying array of colors. You won't get off this carousel. Ah, uh, man. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Something to do with, what was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. Your breathing yeah, right. steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images images start forming uh okay all right. Do you remember the scent of your childhood? You're not kidding anyone, Harry. You don't remember shit. Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? Jeez. You know who I am. I'm the bad day. The one where you ask her. And then later in the streets, wandering. It's the worst day of all time, Harry, dear. And it's coming. She will hear about it on the phone. Jesus. Reality will turn into a grotesque nightmare. This will be the last thing you did to her. Tell me, do you remember the love of your life? Do you remember the warmth of her thighs? between her legs and in her mouth. Surely she left me. That's right, funky baby. And you just stood there, one hand on the bottle and the other on your dick. Well, tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? <laughs> Sorry, cop. Does not want to be sorry to himself. No. It's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. Sorry, cop has a little bit of hope. You failed Elysium. Everything. The pile and the isolas on the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Burning, furious truth. Eight thousand years of written history. Hmm. 
You really dropped the ball, Harry. Disco ball. 4.6 billion people, and you failed every single one of them. You really fucked up. Jesus. <laughs> I'm just going to say Jesus at the end of every single one of these lines of dialogue. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? I'm trying to solve this case. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet, grinding in your head. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. It's another type? Oh yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Time to go to work in the shit factory. And sleep after 2100 hours, sleeping heals everything. Good going, buddy. Oh my god, what the hell was that? Oh, just a dream. You have ones like that all the time. You feel even worse this morning than you did last night. That is factually untrue. You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. Oh, that's not it. I feel super that's good. That's not really true. Your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. Don't do that. Stay strong. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. I'm not going to go looking for speed. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. We're opting out. We can do this. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. Ooh. All right. Well, the fan stands still. I think this is probably a good place to call it. We're going to be done for the day, I think. Yeah, we went just shy of three hours, it looks like. We had a good run. We didn't give in to our base instincts of demanding speed Carl or cigarettes. Fucking care. <laughs> Uh, Alright guys, we're going to be back Tuesday night, 7pm Central. We're going to be probably maybe finishing up Rain World? I don't know. We'll see. Um, if you're just into Disco Elysium, we'll be back next weekend on Saturday morning. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for the follow, Clean Gal. Appreciate you. And we hope to see you all in the next one. Peace! Could I just say shit? <laughs> <laughs>